What if the edge of our solar system is only the beginning, not the end, of something weirder? After years of quiet, the Voyagers arrived in a so-called up that even NASA was shocked by. What Voyager learned out there changes what we believed space could be. Around late 2023, Voyager 1, the farthest human-made thing ever, started sending data that made no sense. For weeks, the signals were shattered and muddled. There was no comprehensible information, and the initial thought of experts was that a component broke. After looking closer, they found a real problem, a messed-up memory area in the spacecraft system. A space radiation probably destroyed the tiny chip. Spacecraft suffer from getting hit by extremely powerful particles. These particles can rip through wires, distorting data by flipping memory bits. Signals were still sent by Voyager 1, but nothing came close to what was required. The only solution was to redo the primary data system from over 15 billion miles away, something it was never intended to do. Yet, after weeks of silence and trials, a signal made it through. The data was clear, structured, and logical. NASA stated Voyager 1 reset its system using the remote instructions, and a small spacecraft memory fixed a big problem with no room for mistakes. It did a procedure that no spacecraft was ever built to try, and it worked. This is the mission's log that shouldn't have lasted. It began in 1977 with a single launch supposed to last five years. Two comparable spacecraft were set to launch, called the first and second Voyagers. These twin NASA-built probes had less computing power than a basic calculator. The mission was regarded as insignificant. Visit the outer planets, collect information and pictures, and wrap up in a few years. Voyager 2 launched first on August 20, 1977, with Voyager 1 following on September 5, 1977. The path was contingent on a rare lineup of planets that occurs once every 176 years. This allowed the spacecraft to bounce from one gas giant to another using gravity, which cut down travel time. Seeing past Saturn was considered a long shot. The probes had no backup solar panels, no AI, and no processors. Each used a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, a nuclear battery that faded over time, giving just enough ability to send brief bursts of data back to Earth. In 1979, Voyager 1 reached Jupiter. It took detailed pictures of storms, strong radiation areas, and the planet's massive magnetic field. Jupiter wasn't just a massive gas ball. It proved to be dangerous with radiation that could destroy spacecraft within hours. But Voyager 1 made it through and delivered discoveries. It found big magnetic fields, faint never-before-seen plasma waves, and rings. Additionally, it noticed something odd. Jupiter's moon Io was covered in active volcanoes. Voyager also revealed more information about Saturn's rings rings that were braided with gaps and patterns shaped by moons. As Voyager 1 went toward deep space, Voyager 2 kept going. In January 1986, it got to Uranus. Uranus wasn't like other planets, it was slanted to one side, spinning like a ball. Its magnetic field was twisted in a manner unlike any other before. Voyager to found ten new moons, weird magnetic fields, and a planet whose features defied ideas. It also discovered thin, dark rings that were almost invisible. In 1989, Voyager to went to Neptune. It was the final stop and presented a wide range of erratic weather. Winds moved faster than sound and massive storms rolled over its surface. It sent more than 9,000 images, displaying a wild environment with winds and storms as it passed Neptune's moon Triton. Triton was covered in frozen nitrogen with geysers shooting liquid nitrogen into the air which froze before falling to the ground. Its surface looked young and had few craters. The data from Uranus and Neptune were the newest and final humans have ever gotten. No other mission has gone back. Everything captured by Voyager to then became valuable. The region where the sun's light fades and space acts differently what started as a five-year planet checkup turned into the longest space mission ever and reached beyond the edge of the solar system. At some point, the planets vanished. No next stop, no moonshots. Voyager 1 passed through Neptune's orbit and kept going. 
But the emptiness turned out to be fascinating because the solar system's edge is not a straight line, and no one had seen it before. That slant is the heliosphere, like an invisible bubble blown by the solar wind. The solar wind is swift, but it hits material composed of gas, dust, fields, and radiation that repels. Voyager 1 was about to hit it. The boundary was guessed by scientists it could look like a wall or a gradient. Because no probe had gone that far, nobody knew. For years, scientists didn't know when the spacecraft would cross or if it would. The sun's sphere extends beyond Pluto and nobody knew where it faded into space. But things changed in 2012. Fields changed as plasma density increased, direction shifted, and then the particles vanished. Voyager 1 was the first human-made thing to leave the solar system. Six years later, Voyager 2 followed, but they didn't find the same things. Voyager 1 entered a region where particles in interstellar space were dense, like walls. Voyager 2 discovered a stream of particles reaching far. Same exit, different entrances. Voyager 1 no longer had its plasma instrument, but Voyager 2 had one. It saw that the plasma was hotter than anticipated, nearly 30 zero degrees Celsius. However, due to the medium's thinness, it seemed cool to the probe. Both voyagers recorded something else. The heliosphere's edge wasn't smooth, it had folds and wrinkles caused by waves of solar energy pushing at the bubble's exterior. The movement of these folds chased the probes. Everything scientists had seen was incorrect. Everything they knew about the solar system's edge broke down. It was different, and it got weirder. The golden record, long before Voyager left the solar system, engineers added a 12-inch disk in an aluminum case, like a quiet signature. Voyager to launched first on August 20, 1977, followed by Voyager 1 16 days later. The path was contingent on a rare alignment of the planets every 176 years. The spacecraft was able to make use of gravitational assists, moving from one gas giant to another and reducing travel time significantly. NASA was aware that this was a tiny window and profited from it. Survival past Saturn was considered unlikely. The probes lacked AI, backup CPUs, or solar arrays. Each made use of a thermoelectric radioisotope generator, a nuclear battery that slowly lost power, supplying sufficient energy to return data to Earth. These battery packs transform the heat produced by radioactive decay into electrical power, a slow but steady flow that can last for decades. Voyager 1 reached Jupiter in 1979. It captured high-resolution images of storms, radiation zones, and the planet's magnetic field. Jupiter was a risky planet, surrounded by radiation that could damage spacecraft quickly. However, Voyager 1 made it, and not only did it survive, but it also came across new discoveries. It detected strong magnetic fields, faint rings, and pulsar waves. It also spotted something unexpected. One of Jupiter's moons, Io, which was believed to be dead, was covered in active volcanoes, some bursting with sufficient force to send material into space. The rings of Saturn were seen by Voyager in detail with gaps, braided rings, and patterns shaped by hidden moons. As Voyager 1 headed into deep space, Voyager 2 continued its mission. In January 1986, it reached Uranus, the only time a spacecraft has visited this planet. Uranus was on its side, spinning like a ball. Its magnetic field was twisted and different from anything seen before. Voyager to found 10 new moons, identified strange magnetic fields, and showed that Uranus was different than expected. It also discovered thin, dark ringlets that were hard to see. In 1989, Voyager 2 went on to Neptune, its last stop, and learned of violent weather. The winds moved huge storms that spun faster than sound over the surface. It sent more than 9,000 images, showing a changing atmosphere with storms and winds of exceedingly high speeds. Passing Triton, Neptune's moon, the probe gathered data that changed common assumptions. The nitrogen was frozen over Triton, with liquid nitrogen being released by geysers into the frozen air before it struck the ground. The surface appeared new, with few craters and evidence of activity. 
The information from Uranus and Neptune was brand new, as no other mission has returned to these planets. Thus, everything Voyager to captured became valuable, revealing a location where sunlight fades and space acts differently. What started as a five-year mission grew to be the longest-running space mission in history, going beyond Saturn to the edge of the solar system. The heliosphere, which is the shape of a space bubble under the sun's influence, marked the boundary. Eventually, the planets were left behind, with no destination and no moons to photograph. When Voyager 1 reached the orbit of Neptune, it kept going, but that nothing turned out to be the most interesting part of the mission because the solar system's edge has no straight line. It's messy and strange. That edge is the heliosphere. Imagine it as a giant bubble blown by the solar wind, flows of charged rays from the sun's surface. The wind from the sun travels a great distance before reaching the interstellar medium, which consists of radiation, magnetic fields, gas, and dust that retaliates. Voyager 1 was about to crash into it. Scientists had wondered what that boundary would be like, a soft gradient or a hard wall. No one knew because no probe had gone that far. Most ideas were based on computer models. Scientists weren't sure when, or if, that line would be crossed by the spacecraft. The sun's magnetic field has a wide range beyond Pluto, and no one was sure where it disappeared into vast space. However, in 2012, the data started to change. The density of plasma spiked, magnetic fields shifted, and charged particles decreased. Voyager 1 was outside, the first human-made object to withdraw from the solar system. Six years later, Voyager 2 followed, and they noticed different things. Though both spacecraft left the solar system, their data did not correspond. When Voyager 1 entered the area, the interstellar dust was thick, like energy walls, while Voyager 2 found a stream of particles reaching far into the sphere of space. They exited the solar system, but through to distinct entrances. That, however, was only one surprise. Voyager 1 had lost its plasma equipment. It could detect particles, but not their temperature or speed. Voyager 2 still had a sensor that worked, and what it saw astonished scientists. Beyond the solar system, the plasma was hotter than expected, almost 30,000. However, due to the medium's thinness, it didn't feel hot to the probe. Both Voyagers recorded something else that was not anticipated. The edge of the heliosphere was uneven. It was wrinkled. Space's immense folds, brought about by the sun's energy pushing and pulling at the edge of the bubble, shifted and moved. These folds should have been empty, but they resulted in increased noise and chaos. The scientists' creations were wrong. Everything they thought they knew about the solar system's outer edge was shattered. Something out there was different. 